This is building a blog with Rails 5 and Bootstrap 4 part 10. Before we get started, I have a quick announcement. If you are following along with this course and want to stay up to date, or if you want to keep up with what we're doing at TechMaker in general, uh, we're revamping what we're doing on the website. Um, so if you go to techmaker.tv, uh, you can subscribe to our new email list and you'll get episodes and walkthroughs and various other things emailed to you every week. All right, let's get started. So in part 10, we're going to add comments to our blog posts. Now on the surface, there's a simple way we could do this, which uh, I don't recommend you follow along with the code right here because I'm not gonna leave this. But I wanted to show you in case you wanna explore this idea on your own. So we could create a new class in the models called comment and then you would say class comment inherits from application record and you would do something like belongs to post and then in post you would have to do has many comments and so on and so forth you would need to write a migration actually what you would do is you would say rails g let me just show you. This is this is easy to undo once I do it. Um, so if I do Rails G uh, model comment and then um, we might say uh, name email and content and then we would need to say host ID integer this will create the uh, migration and the model for us so that gives us this post no, no, no just kidding that gives us this comment I think it messed it up because I already had the file I don't know. There it is. Okay. So now we need to do belongs to post. And then we need to do has many comments. And that's basically the back end for a stupidly simple comment. So then all you would need to do is set up a form, which we've done with various other things. So you could start tracking comments uh, for your blog post just with this little bit of code. Now I'm gonna go ahead before I forget and remove this. And it will be Rails D model comment. And that's gonna remove everything. D is for destroy. Now, comments are deceptively uh, complicated because while on the surface you can just do a simple model and let people enter comments, well, you also have to keep track of things like uh, you don't want to let people just spam you, you want to potentially have an approval process for comments. Um, you may want to keep track of the users who enter comments uh, to some extent. Um, and I, you know, there's different approaches to this. I've built my own comment systems. Lately, I've been just using something like Discuss, which is going to be the easiest possible way to get started with this. So that's, that's what I'm going to do to kick things off. And we may explore building a more in-depth comment system later. Um, but for now, I'm just going to show you how to get some comments started with Discuss. So let's jump over to Discuss. And at Discuss, we'll click Get Started. Um, we'll enter Frog Blog as our name in this case. You type in your name. Um, you're going to paste in a pat or a email and password here and we don't need to save that so now you just basically follow the instructions so I want to install Discuss on my site the website name is frog blog in my case um, 
like a category. Um, the frog blog is probably a tech blog. We could do something funny, but maybe we'll just do that. Um, select a plan. Uh, let's just continue on basic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you were using a different platform, you could just, you know, look through these and you'd probably find a plugin. But since we're writing our own thing, we're just going to click that. Um, and we'll get to this universal code. Uh, let's see here. So basically, we have a few things to copy and paste. So let's check that we have our server running and everything. Yep. OK, so I'm going to just copy this. And we'll mess with it back in our code base. Okay, so if we jump back over to our code, I don't need that, don't save. Um, if we look in the views, we don't want to be in the author section, we want to be in the blog section. Um, and oh, one little comment here, uh, somebody in the comments, if you haven't been reading through the comments, some of them are pretty interesting. Um, somebody and I are having a conversation about how to create a uh, feature that basically says show me less posts like this one or show me more posts like this one and we discussed the idea of having a readers concept so maybe instead of blog you might call this readers and you would set up a reader model and get people to log in and then you could like give them some settings options and stuff anyway just a side comment so now that I've distracted myself where were we so if we go to posts and we go to show um, let's come in just below our post body, give it a little room here, and just paste in the, what they said. So the script tag does not need to go there. So we just want to put the ID discuss thread, and then we'll paste the script stuff at the bottom. Um, and I'm going to properly line that up because that bothers me okay now let's see what happens when we refresh over here so we have a discuss showing up I'm gonna go email or uh, verify my email address really quick so this thing will go away all right so I um, if I refresh the screen now I'm verified so ready to rock so this thing gives us a, a lot of different options um, just by default um, but you can see there's a pretty in-depth comment handling system that you just get out of the box so we have a few things to configure and a few things to work out but that's pretty much all there is to it so let's let, let's jump back into our code um, first of all I think this no script probably needs to go in line under the discuss okay and then let's tab this in. Just get our formatting looking decent. Okay, so the last couple things we need to do in here to get their uh, instructions completed. Um, this little bit of code right here, we need to uncomment, which we can do by just deleting these. Okay, so how do we get the page URL? All right, so there's a thing we can use from Rails. There's an object which, um, you know what, this is too useful for me to not tell you about. So how do I comment this back out? Like that, that will do it. All right, so there's a tool that I use all the time called Pry, and we may or may not have looked at this before a little bit, so if we've already talked about it a little bit, forgive me. Um, but I always stick it in my development test group, and it's Jim, Pry Rails, and then Bundle Install. Um, we're going to put an ERB tag right here, and I'm going to just refresh the screen. And in my terminal, which I have 
chosen a different color scheme for. Um, you can see right here that it stopped on line 23 where we put binding.pry. Now this lets us do all sorts of stuff. So this is basically a um, interactive Ruby shell. Um, so I can do all the normal stuff you can do. Like um, it's like punch in any valid Ruby code and it'll be executed right here. But the beautiful thing is that we have access to the variables wherever we put the pry. So for instance, we have an app host. Um, that's our instance variable for this view. So you can call at posts and then call methods on it at post.title, at post.id, so on and so forth. Um, additionally, um, we can talk to something called the request object. Now, this represents the um, original user request that came in. And if I hit enter, it's going to be this enormous thing. And this thing goes on for a while. If you uh, just hold enter, you can see all of it. I'm going to click Q, which is going to get me out of there. Um, so there's one method I'm interested in right now called um, request.originalurl. And that's going to give me the uh, full URL of the page that I'm on. One other quick thing. Here's a few quick tricks if you're ever just dealing with um, running around in the terminal looking for things. So you can do request. Um, methods.sort it's going to show you every method that that thing knows about again you can hit Q if you don't want to scroll all the way down um, there's another one called public methods dot sort uh, it's going to do the same kind of deal and then the one that I use all the time is public methods false now what this is going to do it's going to give you the public methods that are defined on this request object because I don't know if you're how familiar you are with Ruby, but um, the object will also know about all of its ancestors methods. So we want to see the ones just defined on this uh, class in particular. So it's going to tell us there are none, which is interesting. Um, anyway, that's an interesting side note, but we got what we came here for. So if I go back to um, code. I'm going to get rid of the pry. Remove this uh, comment. And here we can do uh, request our original URL. For the identifier, uh, we have some options, but I think we should call this the slug. So you can do um, the post ID, um, you can do the post slug potentially because it is unique. Let me make sure that's true. Yeah, so that's going to be unique in this case. So let's see what this does. Uh, we broke it. What is happening here? Maybe there's an error. Unexpected token. Line 105, I think, is where it said. No, that's not in us. Um, maybe these need to be in tick marks. It seems to like that better. So that is the basic setup for adding comments. There's some additional information about displaying comment counts, which I'll let you try out. I don't really want to do that on this. OK, cool. So that is pretty much it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to be doing um, quite a bit of design changes to the site um, just to kind of get it looking more professional. Um, I think there's going to be an episode after that where we add an account management page so authors can upload um, pictures of themselves, bios, that sort of thing. Um, once we get through with that, uh, we'll probably go ahead and try to deploy this to Heroku. I know a few people had some trouble with that, so we'll go through 
uh, how to get that going. It seems like there may need to be some changes um, to um, some plugins we've been using, uh, but I'm not sure. So we'll do that together and see what happens. Um, like I said at the beginning, if you want to follow along with everything that we're doing, go to techmaker.tv and subscribe. Um, and I will talk to you next time.